Simon, thank you very much, and thank you everyone for my birthday applause. Um, so our presentation uh, will provide an overview of what the humanitarian system looks like and how well it's performing. And we'll also attempt to provide an insight into the emerging pressures and influences that could shape the future of humanitarian operations. Now, Abby will begin by clarifying some of the methodological and conceptual issues. What do we mean by a humanitarian system? And what methods were, were used to assess collective performance? She'll also <coughs> provide us with a description of the shape of the system, its size, capacities, and funding flows. And then I'll give an interpretation of how well the system is performing based on some of the more important points in the report. But before we get on to the substance, I'd just like to bring up to date with the thinking behind this report and where it came from. Now, my part in the story began about five years ago when our chair today, Simon, was the uh, director of the ODI. And Simon had been asked by the ICRC board to tell them how the humanitarian system was likely to develop over the next decade. And to do this, it required information on global needs, caseload, capacity of the system, successes and failures. Now Simon asked me where he could find this information. Now I suggested that although some of the data did exist in bits and pieces, it was not collated and it would be hard to find. And some of it, notably global needs and humanitarian caseload, did not exist in the first place. So ideally, Simon would have liked a one-stop shop, but sadly, all that was available was a bewildering array of disparate data storms. And this predicament didn't reflect well on the humanitarian system. Uh, without a, a regular and systematic means of assessing and reporting on collective performance, it was not possible to demonstrate how well the system was doing, what improvements needed to be made, and how to plan for future challenges. Now, the best efforts to date have probably been through joint evaluations, but as we know, they can only present uh, a snapshot of one particular emergency at a particular point in time. And the truth is that an information gap like this does not inspire confidence amongst those who pay for aid, those that should benefit from it, and indeed all of us that work in it, who really need to know whether we're part of something that's working well or not. So this issue was discussed intensively within the ALMAP membership, and to cut a very long story short, the initial results of our deliberations ended up looking like this. A, a pilot to trial a methodology for assessing system-wide performance on a regular basis. Now the idea here was to use the pilot as a light baseline for subsequent iterations of the report. After the pilot report was published, we undertook a review which told us there was widespread support for the report in general, but that critical elements, some critical elements, were missing. Some of these, like data on global needs, caseload and impact, still represent challenges today. But we have been able to address other gaps, like information on new actors, such as national disaster management authorities, and primary data from the recipients of aid. And you'll hear more about this from Abby in a moment. So, the first edition proper is a result of about five years of planning and testing by hundreds of people, many of whom are in this room this afternoon. And I think this re report represents a, a truly collective effort, and I very much hope that its publication makes a contribution to creating a more mature system, one that's able to regularly report both the good and the bad, and one that's co uh, committed to collective learning. So, over to you, Abby. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks. Um, my name is Abby Stoddard, and I'm with the Humanitarian Outcomes Group. It's been our good fortune that uh, LMAP has chosen us as their partner to design and, and research the state of the humanitarian system study. Um, I think we all agreed when we took it on that it was a highly ambitious and somewhat daunting endeavor, uh, but a worthwhile one. And it's credit to John and his colleagues at LMAP for conceiving of it and making it happen. So I'll be um, briefly <coughs> outlining the uh, report's objectives and the methods that we use. And as you may have noticed, it's rather long, and necessarily so given the, uh, the scope of the subject. Uh, so I won't be able to touch on absolutely everything or to get into a lot of detail, uh, but I'll do my best to give you some headlines. Now the research goals of uh, the state of the system are pretty much the same as they were in the pilot that we did three years ago. 
That report covered the years 2007, 2008, and was really the first attempt, as John said, to map and measure the overall size, scope, and composition of this thing we call the humanitarian system, and also to get a broad assessment of its performance at the system level. And uh, the 2012 report, which we're calling the first full report, it covers the years 2009 and 10 and compares findings as far as possible to the baseline that was established in the pilot. So uh, we have a number of different components in, in, the, uh, in the 2012 report. Um, on the measurement side, there is the basic data gathering to get the descriptive statistics on the system. And that includes the, um, the basic numbers and compositions of the humanitarian actors. And that's through the hard slog of just going through budgets and annual reports, et cetera. As well as a financial analysis to look at humanitarian aid flows to track the level and the channels of humanitarian funding in the system. Now, on the performance assessment side, there are a number of components we used in the research. Um, the first is the evaluation synthesis. Uh, this is our attempt to take the numerous disparate evaluations that are produced by humanitarian actors, mostly at the program and country level, and draw from them the common themes and results and lessons that can be applied to an overall performance assessment of the system. And our starting point for that was the LNAP database, which had about 200 evaluations for the time period. And we supplemented that with um, additional agency documentation and uh, secondary literature. So in addition to that, we did 148 interviews with key informants, um, mostly at the global headquarters level. Uh, UN agencies, NGOs, governments, etc. And we repeated our global survey of humanitarian practitioners, uh, and this includes national governments. It was um, this time available in four languages instead of two, and it got 631 responses from over 180 different humanitarian entities in about 75 countries. Now what's new in this report that wasn't in uh, the last time around was, first of all, uh, two case studies in Kenya and South Sudan. Um, and <coughs> we don't claim that these are representative of all humanitarian settings, uh, but we found them very useful as sort of a ground-truthing exercise and a way to explore more deeply the local aid sector, which got short shrift uh, in the pilot. Um, we also, for the first time, did um, a survey for aid recipients, which got 1,100 aid recipient responses in four different aid settings, DRC, Haiti, Uganda, and Pakistan. And this was thanks to the very kind voluntary efforts of three NGOs, um, Church World Service Pakistan, CRS Haiti, and PPDR <coughs> Uganda, and also to Mobile Accord, which did a pro bono uh, SMS-based survey for us in Eastern DRC. So all of those components together go into the um, performance assessment. Um, and we, well, we tried to incorporate lessons from the pilot into this, and we refined our tools and our approaches. But in general, what we were trying to do is cast a wider net with our data gathering uh, for more comprehensive and inclusive uh, analysis of <coughs> the humanitarian system. We wanted really to try and break out of the echo chamber of northern, western humanitarian actors talking to and about ourselves and try to bring in the local aid actors as much as possible. I think we were partially successful. To be honest, there's still a way to go. But I also think that with each iteration of this report, it can become more comprehensive and inclusive.